copy sets. So a lot like uh, other games, there's there's some initial settings that you can put up, put uh, choose for your character mm -hmm. um, that just kind of get them into like the ballpark of what you want to be, who you want to be, and what you want to change. Oh man! And then once you're in that ballpark, all the other tabs let you dial that in, uh, be exactly who you want to be. It's our our goal with this is to make sure that for anyone that fantasized about bringing themselves to the school for yeah. the very first time, yeah. that they feel like they have the options in order to represent who they are and and essentially bring themselves to Hogwarts or whatever character they want to bring to Hogwarts. Oh my God, and options galore. Uh, do you mind if I try to put myself in here right quick? It's all about you Okay, 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 all right, all right. So, oh, okay, yeah, that's me, that's me. We're here, we're here, that's me right there. All right, so let's, <laughs> that's the one. We're so, pretty close, but let's like, let's look at, let's look at everything okay, here. Let's you know, go let's over play here. around with some of these options, like really. <laughs> All right, so what are we looking at with this option over here with the tab? I see face stuff. Yeah, so a lot of the different faces that you saw in the in the previous screen, all those mm -hmm. faces are are choices that you have here. So you can now you're just kind of getting into the details in yeah. your face shape and your skin color. Um, and then because we knew a lot of people going right in are going to want it right away, even yeah. though it's an option later in the game, yeah. uh, you can collect different types of glasses, put them on later. Uh, we give you some options right up front if you want to have glasses for your character. Oh man, oh my gosh, look at the structure of the faces with this. Wow, you guys thought of every crazy. I like that. I don't think my face is that skinny, but I think we'll go with that. <laughs> I think we'll go that route. Uh, and down here is this. Those are your glasses this there. Gla yeah. <laughs> Oh, so we started, we could, we could go Harry Potter if you want. Off the show. <laughs> oh, man. And this is just some of the options, I'm assuming? Yeah, uh, so through the course the board, of the game, there's a lot there's a lot of different uh, options that you'll keep unlocking. Okay. So as part of kind of like gear for the character, there's lots of different classes. There's even masks. There's all kinds of things uh, over the course of the game. For, I like how it's all Victorian era, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah for, very authentic. Such a good call. <laughs> such a good call. Oh, my gosh. All right, so now, oh, my. Oh, we can go fleek on this one with the hair. <laughs> I spend a lot of time here just like dreaming about my different characters. And oh my gosh, like. the pony. I, the thing I'm always amazed by whenever I see any aspects of Hogwarts Legacy's character creator is just the texture. And like you even adding the bounce with the hair moving around. Yo, that kind of looks like Hermione a little bit. <laughs> I'm not even gonna just like Fred. I'm not Fred. And we can just go. Can I go like Tonks purple or green a little bit? Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> Yo, this is so cool. Oh, I like that. That is cute. Oh, <laughs> okay, so a uh, little behind the scenes. I used to have this type of hair like way, way, way back, but. Was it purple? <laughs> I wanted uh, silver tips, so that was the closest I got to any color, but oh my gosh, this is so cool. So you literally can bring yourself, like it's, it's a myriad of textures and different hairstyles here. All right, so now we're getting over here to uh, play around with some of the- These are more subtle options. Okay. We've got freckles, moles, um, different things like uh, when it comes to your complexion, like darker eyes, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. like some shading on the cheeks. Oh man. You guys literally thought of it <laughs> with this. Yeah, I do have a bit of fun with that. And then the scars are, are one of those options where, um, you know, Harry had his own unique star, yeah. scar, but you can come in with Yours. different scar options. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. Look at that. I didn't even see that. Oh, those are my favorite. The, the, the eyebrow scars. Yeah, yeah. Love those. Love yeah. those. You look kind <laughs> of a like, classic. Yeah, you look kind of just like tough. But anyway, <laughs> so now we're over here. Oh man, this, you guys, this is so sick. So again, getting more subtle mm -hmm. here, you know, mm -hmm. really like dialing in that face to, to <laughs> really get, get, get yeah. your. I don't know how uh, reveal like I want to be with my facial uh, features now. Just like, yeah, I kind of have a big face. <laughs> yeah, my eyebrows kind of sit kind of low. <laughs> but I mean, literally, you have so many options just starting the game. 
I feel like I'm going to be here like forever. Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> and then this this final tab here, this is where you kind of bring your whole character together. You know, this is where you finalize everything. You're not choosing your house here. Okay. That's not yet. That uh, was a theory. <laughs> uh, but but you know, here's where you bring uh, you, you choose voice one or voice two, which is more kind of a masculine or a feminine it's voice. Funny. And then even within that, changing your pitch, oh, with the, the pitch uh, slider. It's a subtle slider, but yeah. but you can hear it. Concerned about. That was quite something. And so you can kind of make out the differences. But yeah, you choose which kind of voice that you want. Uh, you'll be selecting your difficulty here. For today, we'll just go normal because okay. Andrew's going to be uh, taking us through some of the experiences with combat later. And we can talk a little more about difficulty, yeah, with, with combat and how that plays in. That but but I think the, the important thing yeah. here is like if, if for people who aren't gamers, especially, right. story mode is a way to get into this without being worried about like, oh, do I need to be good at games? Like, no, just enjoy this game. It's and I will put expecto and then go. Uh, <laughs> we're good, we're good, awesome. And then uh, whether you want to be witch or wizard. <laughs> Amazing. What do you think, character creator? We're good. I'm good. I let yo. Let's explore Hogwarts and let's get into some. Combat. All right. Through the magic of uh, using using a dev kit, we're gonna be loading up a, a save a little later in. Um, so that we can show you more about Hogwarts and give you that taste of combat. All right, Andrew's got some gameplay pulled up for us here. We are uh, starting out, James. There, there you are. You're wearing the House Fanatic <laughs> robes uh, from the from the account linking. Thank you, thank you. I, I do look good. Uh, and this is our first look at the Hufflepuff common room. I'm assuming. I mean, the, dorm room. The dorm room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is awesome. But well, Alan, what are we what are we seeing right here with the UI? Because this is our first look. Yeah. So um, right now, we know there's been a lot of questions about. Uh, about about the HUD because this is the first time we're showing it. So um, kind of going over it from right to left, on the bottom right is what we call our spell diamond. Mm -hmm. So those are, everything that you see in it are slottable spells. So we have over 20 slottable spells that you can earn over the course of the game. Okay. okay. And, and that's where the player can place them and use them and access them very quickly. Um, to the top left of that is you'll see the D-pad and on the left is an eyeball and on the right is a bit of a grid. So uh, the eyeball is an example of one of, not a slottable spell, but what we call an essential spell. Um, there are certain spells that are used in very specific contexts or, um, or that we just want on the controller at all mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. And Ravello is one of those. That's okay. left on the D-pad. On the right on the D-pad is that grid represents where you might slot spells. And so okay. right now, today, we're not going to be going into the spell slotting menu because we feel like there's a lot of spoilers there. You know, like, <laughs> what are all the spells and what I, can we do? I would like spoilers, but I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we do want to make sure there's still some goodies left to share with mm -hmm. everyone. And then uh, on the left side, that thing that has the L1 button next to it, uh -huh. that's another thing where we don't want to spoil, but basically, that's where you access your tool wheel. So there's a lot of magical tools that you're going to be uh, kind of brewing and growing over the course of the game. <laughs> and so that's where you would access them rapidly is our tool wheel. Okay, cool. Um, there are a few things that I left off the table on the right. Uh, the green bar is your health. And basically, there's a potion next to it. That's how you might heal mm -hmm. the bar above it. We're keeping a secret for now. I apologize. <laughs> and uh, all the way on the left is our mini map with a kind of overhead view of where you are currently yeah. in your common room that updates as you travel through um, Hogwarts and beyond out into the world. And for those those fans out there that aren't a huge fan of minimaps, because we know they exist, there's also options to remove the minimap oh, and cool. turn on or off different elements cool. of okay. our HUD. But really that, immerse yourself. Yeah. In, yeah. In, yeah. <laughs> and we'll go more into the spells as we get into combat, but that's kind of that's that's what you're seeing there. And this is our HUD. Also, Andrew's giving us a, a good look over here. I want to I want to call out. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of the bedside tables in the dormitories. Um, very nice bedside tables. They are nice bedside tables. Yeah. <laughs> the honey colored wood was mentioned in the writing. It's part of lore. It's part of lore. There we go. All right. So now we're walking out into. We, we really tried making these low ceilinged dorms to give you that badger set yeah. <laughs> sort of feel. And the first thing I know is the music. The score is amazing with this. Gorgeous. And, yeah. and I'm calling out here, uh, th this is unique music that you're hearing for the Hufflepuff common room. Go back to those common room videos we released, you'll notice the music's a little bit different, and that is entirely intentional. We just want to welcome you to your common room in every single house, just <laughs> a little bit differently. You can customize that experience right away. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Look at that.
So, I mean, beautiful design. I, I, we could spend like the entire rest of the stream just in the common room here yeah. <laughs> and talking about it. And I'm sure Boston and James could be like just <laughs> geeking out over it. This, all, oh, the, this all, all the details come from J.K. Rowling's writings for this common room. The round doors, the hanging vines, even the dancing badgers on the <laughs> fireplace. It's kind of real earthy vines. Yeah. It's very, very earthy. Which is which is like elements for each of the houses, yeah. right? Hufflepuff like, is earth, Ravenclaw is air, Gryffindor is fire, and Slytherin is water. We wow. really, really leaned into that for each common room. Wow. So it feels earthy. We've got a little earthen passageway. That's that's what we were... Hopefully, yeah. it should feel very familiar. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. But I, I know you don't want to leave, but we're going to be leaving. Thank you. I understand. Whoa, the sound effects though. Like, looking back at the past trailers, it was just music, but kind of hearing how Hogwarts is now, it's so cool. It's tactile. <laughs> yeah. Andrew's going to make use of one of our spells, Revelio. Use Revelio right here, because there's a little magic going on. You notice a little something there. <laughs> yeah. So, um, these are something that we kind of interchangeably called Revelio pages or lore pages. And you'll notice a bunch of things pop up on the screen. Yeah. You see that we got XP. some XP for it. Mm -hmm. And you can also see that we've advanced something called like a field guide challenge okay. up in okay. the corner. Uh -huh. So I want to talk about that a little bit. So we had to ask ourselves, what? <laughs> <laughs> Continue, I'm sorry. <laughs> there may be something you may or may not be able to tickle there. Yeah. Um, but uh, in our game, we had to answer the question, you know, we're a late fifth year. What does that mean? How do we catch up to the other students? Okay, okay. And so we have an answer to that question, and, and it's given to you by the staff. So there's something that we call the Wizard's Field Guide that's granted to you early on in the game. And the Wizard's Field Guide is how, how you actually work on catching up with the other students. So Andrew, if you hit pause for me up here, before you push forward a little bit, you can see in our pause menu, it's got this book theme. Wow. That's your wizard's field guide. And you can see your house kind of crest right, overlaid yeah. over it. Okay. Right? okay. And you can see that on your level as well. Was it designing those and putting all oh, those in gorgeous, there? Oh, they're gorgeous, but that they're there just like in the books. Yes. Right it's next to the Great Hall. It's a nod yeah. to lore. House points is not a core mechanic or system in the yeah, game. We, it is we didn't turn it into like a, a gameplay system, but it's definitely present throughout our narrative. And, and there are lots of choices where we want to nod to Things that aren't don't aren't necessarily gameplay systems, but yeah. but we nod to them as as part of the narrative. Over to the right, part of there, the Andrew world. was teasing. That's the uh, great, great hall world. over yeah. through those doors. Again, we're not going there. We're, he's just kind of like, ah, ah. <laughs> no. Cool, cool. Uh, here's another collectible page. You know, just again showing you like just these things around Hogwarts that you can oh, do man. and pick up and. That's a shot straight from the trailer too. Just that <laughs> part right there, I, I recognize that. It might be giving you a little fan service here with uh, with callbacks to those. So, and, um, and this must be summertime because I notice these are the summertime windows. These windows will change with the seasons. Yeah, the detail they put in this is kind of. I get surprised by it all the time. <laughs> it's a sentient a magic thing. castle. So. <laughs> oh man, and we're going out. Look at that. This is where the students would normally kind of congregate, just to kind of chill out, play, meet each other outside of the Great Hall before and after meals. And I, I, I love the way that when the castle interconnects to, uh, that it interconnects outside, inside, there, there are pathways on both sides of things. So you really get a sense of scope yeah. to, to how big this castle and, is. And when you see things, like you'll, you'll notice a bridge over there, that's a place you can go to and cross. Like yeah. everything is, everything that you see is a place that you can visit. Wow. We tried so, we put a lot of effort in making it feel really alive. Um, not just with student population, but even just the greenery and stuff, it's Scotland. Yeah. And this castle's been here for <laughs> hundreds of years, so just kind of <laughs> the moss yeah. and all the trees that have overgrown it. And oh my gosh. That landscape, that this Scottish. This location might look a little familiar to you. Um, I thought I recognized it. I believe this is from the spring ASMR. And yes, so that puzzle right there, that view, uh, Andrew is taking us right back to I'm that. I'm gonna tell Andrew not to interact <laughs> with that puzzle and to keep moving on. No. We can't spoil everything. We can't give you everything, right? Hogwarts so. contains a lot of secrets. <laughs> oh my uh, God. But this is uh, th this grand entryway right here coming down into uh, a really kind of central area. 
Yeah, we're coming upon the central hall, and we. <laughs> yeah. He's got this grin on his face over there. That's just like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. That statue is from the reveal trailer. There's that dragon. Oh my gosh. This is another location where the students will gather, um, you know, and just kind of chill out. And, and an uh, opportunity to uh, talk to somebody, get a get a yeah. quest giver here. Is everything all right? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm just... I'm Nelly, by the way. I'm just so excited that the Dedalian keys are back. The what keys? The Dedalian keys. Surely you've seen them flying about. Rumour is that a former headmistress, Professor Mole, conjured them to protect the contents of certain locked cabinets years ago. Professor Black couldn't be bothered to disenchant the keys, and they appear every few years. You should try to catch one. Why would I do that? Each key will lead you to a locked cabinet somewhere in the castle. If you can manage to get the key into the cabinet lock, not an easy task, you may find a reward. Perhaps I'll give it a go. I hope you do. In fact, I think I heard one of the keys in the astronomy tower. You should listen for them. Uh, can also offer different choice points for the player, and then some of those things uh, can can affect things game wide. Some of these affect characters' lives, uh, the ending of the game, um, and sometimes it's just about you being a little bit of a nice guy or just being a jerk. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's very top. Oh my gosh. Being in a classroom, I think this is a good opportunity to talk about how classes work because we've gotten a lot of questions about that. Is it mm. a schedule-based system? Is mm. it to, to tell us how classes work? Yeah, so um, ultimately you decided not to go the sim route. So I think like one of the speculations was, is there time of day and you know that kind of thing? Like, can I miss class at this yeah. time of day? There is a day-night cycle. Yeah, yeah there is a day-night cycle, but, uh, but everything is very um, narrative-based. And so... There's a big mystery going on in the world. There's something happening in the narrative, and we and we essentially see it as kind of like chapters in that narrative, each chapter of which has a set of missions that you can choose between as you're progressing through the game, and classes fit within that structure. Mm -hmm. So there are mainline things that the players have to do, and then classes also appear on the sides as well as optional things that help you advance your spells. It's absolutely true that classes provide all of your major tools throughout the gameplay, your spells, your major abilities. You get to know the professors. Each one of them has these bespoke uh, kind of events yeah, and moments yeah, in those missions. Yeah. And then there are also additional opportunities outside of that through kind of like side classroom missions, essentially, where you can learn additional spells or things that you need in your adventure and also get to know the professors better. And but, I just want to call out something that, that Andrew's been kind of showing off, uh, ways to kind of interact with the environment and just, just uh, engage with the world. And, you know, maybe down there he's sipping some tea yeah. with the... Uh, <laughs> <I love it. laughs> Victorian so. high, you know. Yeah. Well, high society. High yeah. society. Yeah. And it's no wonder you like this area because we built it for, like, the purebloods <laughs> and the Slytherins. Oh, and... come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, speaking of lived in, like, the sound effects again, the chatter of the communication that's happening and the footsteps, like... It just makes it feel more alive. Little events like that, brooms going <laughs> I by just saw overhead. A broom <laughs> <laughs> Love that. The data tower was one example, but um, no two hallways should look the same in Hogwarts. It's a, it, it has a lot of personality. Every hallway should be a little bit different, and that's mostly to help orient the player, right, uh, right. help you not get lost. But right. uh, uh, this is Hesperus Hall. That's a little nod from the Marauders, a name that came from the right. Mar Marauders map. But every hallway will have a little bit of a different personality and... Personality, I like that. Because yeah, it, it gives, it does, like, Hogwarts has character, Hogwarts is its own character no matter where you go. Yeah. Feels just a little bit different. Yeah. A sentient castle full of magic for hundreds of years. Yeah. It's going to kind of and grow and develop. Of, uh, oh, I heard something. Uh, yeah, speaking of characters. Speaking of magic, <laughs> Mr. Magic himself. <laughs> My future poltergeist for two. You know, we talked about building on lore too. I know there's that statue over to the side. Oh, yeah. That's Do you know who that is? Lachlan the Lanky. Yeah. And he's yeah. got his, his bow truckle friend. And, <laughs> and I think if players don't know, there's another well, Revelio sorry. page there. Yeah, yeah. there's a, a map of Argyllshire. We know the fat lady hides it's there. Hides behind it. That's right. Well, the third, third book. <laughs> but sometimes a, a hallway has personality by how it looks. Or we just passed a music hallway where the portraits have kind of taken it over. And um, so the sound makes it really unique. 
All right, I gotta call this out here. I know there's been some criticism in the past that uh, our trailers and our gameplay and what we've shown so far has not had enough owls, okay? <laughs> so here we are at the Owlry. We're looking directly at the Owlry <laughs> to show you all of the owls. It's a Every, lot of owls. It's a lot of owls at the Owlry. I love all the, the owls. fog rolling down that Great line. callback. Great call. <laughs> no, I also I also love that as I, I, one of my favorite things about just kind of going around on the outside of the school is that all those things that I see are places that I can mm. go to, that I can visit. I just love that sensation so knowing cool. that that is real. That lovely Scottish countryside. <laughs> We're uh, kind of closing out our, our mini tour of Hogwarts. And again, it was, a, it was but a fraction of uh, this enormous castle. Uh, <laughs> But we're closing it out here in the clock tower, so another recognizable location. Yeah. But this is where Crossed Wands, which is the secret, not so secret dueling club, is <laughs> uh, that the students have put together. Professors definitely know about it, but they think they're being clever. <laughs> uh, and it's run by this uh, Luke and Brattleby here, who's in a younger year. But we kind of like that this yeah, that he's running things. Hello, Lucan. May I use the training dummy? Of course. I'll fetch it and give you a list of combinations to practice. Ready to have a try now? That would be wonderful. Be sure to cast all of your spells before the dummy lands. If you need to stop practicing before you finish all of them, let me know. And this is a really good opportunity to now jump into combat because really in the game, this is gonna be uh, the first time where you yourself get to learn about combat and combos in a big way and in a new way. Uh, for me personally, this was where the game like really starts to open up to the possibilities. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So we've set, up a, we've set up a training dummy and this is kind of an activity where you're supposed to execute according to kind of the iconography on the top. Now, uh, what we see on the top is the Accio spell followed by four, what we just kind of lovingly refer to as basic shots. Um, <laughs> uh, there are certain spells what the wizards kind of like use, just kind of fling, Andrew's using one now. And you trigger that by tapping R2 on your controller. So you can mm -hmm. see in the corner R2. So if you tap R2, that throws out a basic shot. But that R2 is also your gateway to all of the, the uh, spells that you might slot. So if you okay. hold R2 instead, you can see how the diamond expands. And if we let go, you see how it contracts. Yeah. And so if you hold it again, it expands. And so when it expands and all the spells that you slotted while you're holding that button can now be tapped with your face buttons. Awesome. And not only that, but over the course of the game, you can gain um, additional spell diamonds, up to four additional ones, so that you can slot up to 16 spells, you know, pretty much instantly. And then that helped us um, fulfill the fantasy of in combat, I need to be able to access things very rapidly. Yeah. And, and so you learn over the course of these events, you know, how to juggle not just the spell casting, but also it reinforces um, an understanding of another feature of the wheel, which is their cooldowns. Mm -hmm. So as you're casting spells, just to make sure that you're not just kind of like repeatedly using one thing over and over and right, over again, right. you can see cooldowns on the spells that he's using uh, on the wheel. And then as you progress through the game, there are different things that can affect things like cooldowns through your talents, uh, different things that okay. allow you to kind of like okay. juggle and adjust and, and wow. update those things. And so if you hold down our R2 and you tap the D-pad, it will switch between your other diamonds if you've unlocked them. And, and that's how you access all those. Oh man. It looks like you're about to get some action over here. Yeah. So this is this is a great way to kind of learn how to pull things together. Um, so you pull those combos right together. Yeah. yeah. Tap, Accio, tap, tap, tap. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well done, Andrew. <laughs> and that's just against the dummy, but I mean... Uh... I'd say that's enough practice. You looked good out there. Thank you, Lucan. I say better to discover one's weaknesses during practice than during a duel. You'll be a fearsome challenger now. I think now we can, uh, we can take on something a little more challenging. It's going to shoot back. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about uh, some more features of the combat system. Hello, Lucan. Is the next round of Crossed Wands all set? Why, yes it is. I've got a great match lined up. Ready for another round? We're on a PS5 dev kit here, so we're going to be able to kind of pause I'm the ready. pause <laughs> the action yeah, yeah. and talk about what you're seeing on the screen, because uh, there is about to be a lot going on. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. All right, here you can select uh, if you want to fight with somebody else, some of One your of classmates. Yeah, yeah. But in this case, we're not. We want we want that action to feel a little more frantic <laughs> towards you to really get you that sense of of uh, of combat. 
So Ready apparently you've uh, not quite the reputation because they've got you up against yeah. three people. Three, yeah. Uh, off the boss. jump. <laughs> um, so I can I can explain this uh, just because I know people are going to go into it, but we can probably just kind of jump in. Um, so uh, you're not the only one that has Protego and the ability to deflect. The enemies do too. And we actually play with that when it comes to the spell casting. So you notice that there are different colored kind of shields yeah. around the different characters. And you also notice that your spells have different colors on them. So to help players understand kind of like the function of their spells, we're yeah. trying to put them into brackets. So there are damage spells, there are force spells, there are, um, I'm forgetting the other one, all of a sudden, control spells. Mm -hmm. And so those things for the player, uh -huh. they wind up also being a color indicator for which which actual spell to use to break the different shields that uh, enemies can use. That's that awesome. way it rewards kind of like that close right. attention that right. you're paying, paying on things. We've got this paused here now, and you can kind of see all the elements on the screen, the, the halo around the avatar's head, yeah. each of the different shields uh, to kind of give us a, give us a breakdown yeah, of what's going on. Give us a breakdown of different things that you're saying. <laughs> um, so you notice at the top uh, that we're, we're kind of like calling out which enemy you currently have targeted and yeah. their level and health. And so, you know, as you target different characters, you'll be able to get that breakdown. Yeah. The, uh, the halo over your head, whenever an enemy is about to an, an attack, it's, it's almost like you have a little bit of a sixth sense for those things that are coming. <laughs> um, if you see the halo, it means there's an incoming attack. And if you tap the triangle button by default, mm -hmm. then that you will be able to deflect that attack that comes in oh. and off with yeah. your protector. And okay. I love that yeah. deflect where it goes off and, and like hits things yeah. up yeah. and kind of breaks things off walls too. <laughs> but also uh, if you hold the button, then it doesn't just it doesn't just deflect, it also deflects and turns around with a counter attack stupefy that actually stuns the enemy. And you can use that even in your combos and stuff. So yeah. if you're focused on a character, you know, and you're you're mm -hmm. doing your thing, yeah. and someone else attacks you, you can actually turn that attack into a direct attack on the person that you're comboing. Back into into gameplay here, Andrew's gonna pretty pretty handily finish these these other students off here, win this duel. How fast it is! It's like a dance. <laughs> yeah, we really felt like the um, we really felt like in the movies. There's almost like a. a it's kind of like a, there, there's call. this element of kind of like fencing from a very great yeah, distance. Yeah, that's such a good call. And there are a lot of, uh, a lot of things that we had to do with, with our controls and combat system in order to kind of capitalize on that idea that's pretty unique to the Wizarding World. Yes. <laughs> well, perhaps you should try that next time. The other duelists have already taken notice of you, but after that last round, they'll really have it in for you. You'd better keep practicing if you want a chance at winning, or at least surviving the next round. I'll let you know when we're ready. Hope to see you then. The next round is for all the gobstones, so to speak. And that is more or less gonna wrap it up for us for now, for what we wanted to show you. No, Character no. creator, <laughs> tour of Hogwarts, and uh, just that, that little taste of combat. Uh, but we, we didn't want to leave you without well, maybe a little taste of something that that we're uh, we may show in the future, may show next time. Uh, you know, so leaving the castle, uh, going out here. Um. More more owls uh, confirmed. <laughs> owl mail. Oh, th there's the owlry again. Yes, <laughs> all of the owls. Uh, but yeah, just heading out here again to show you, like from Hogwarts to the world beyond Hogwarts. And oh, man. The, this is not somewhere where we're going today, but uh, we'll, we will definitely be taking you in the future. Oh my gosh. A little glimpse at the, the scale of the castle back there. All right, so we're